Welcome to the video on HR interview questions and answers. I am Shipra Singh from CareerRight.com. We help students prepare, practice and find a placement for themselves. Specially developed for the fresh graduates, this video covers the most important questions that you will find at every interview. And if you can pull these off properly, you stand high chances of getting through. To begin with, here's a glimpse of what you are going to learn with me. And by the end of this video, you will be ready to face any HR interview effectively. So stay tuned till the end and make sure that you listen to everything I say very carefully. Okay, so before trying to score the brownie points, let me show you how not to lose them out. Yes, let's talk about those 7 deadly mistakes that can cost you the opportunity. Mistake number 1. Going unprepared. When you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Please do not ever go to an interview without preparation because this is the single biggest mistake that can throw you out of the race. Thousands and thousands of candidates apply for every single position. So yes, the competition is fierce. Do not disservice yourself by being unprepared. So here are the three most important things you should do before an interview. Number one, study the job requirements, the employer and the industry well. Number two, anticipate the questions and write down your model answers. Number three, rehearse. Now this is an extremely useful tip that I am going to reveal before you. So please pay attention. 80% of the serious candidates would prepare their model answers, but they will also not rehearse them. So here lies your opportunity. Rehearse your answers in front of a mirror. You will see your words coming out more smoothly. Your body language will be much more supportive and your confidence level will be much more higher. Believe me, if you go prepared, your eyes and body language will reflect it. And there's no recruiter in this world who would want to lose out on a good candidate. Mistake number two, dressing shabbily. Yes. I have had candidates coming to the interview just out of their bed. It is really, really repulsive. Even before you have uttered your first word, the interviewer has already made up his mind. Even if he asks you some questions, it is just out of politeness. With this mistake, you would shoot yourself in the foot. Mistake number three, being late. This is the most basic etiquette which I should not even need to talk about. But over the years, I have seen candidates turning up for the interview even half an hour late. Anticipate the weather conditions, the traffic conditions or anything else that might delay you. But make sure that you reach the interview venue at least 20 minutes in advance. Give yourself the time to calm down and breathe. This waiting time will also give you an opportunity to get your thoughts together and perform better. When you are called, leave out everything except your resume, pen and a notepad outside. Yes, even your mobile phone. Put it on silent mode and leave it in the bag outside. Carrying too many things makes it difficult to manage them and looks messy. Mistake number four, trying to hijack. Trying to hijack the interview is another characteristic that no interviewer appreciates. It's good to be confident, but you need to understand that the interview is the interviewer's show. Give him the opportunity to speak. Listen to his questions carefully without interrupting. Let your answers be crisp and relevant. Candidates who keep blabbering about themselves leave the interviewers irritated and are usually rejected. Mistake number five, telling lies. Don't tell lies to get hired because it is very easy to find them out. A bit of cross questioning can land you in trouble. Do not fake your resume, certificates, experience or any other detail. Even if you get selected somehow, you will always be under the threat. What if it is discovered? In addition to the core skills, 
an interviewer tries to see three important qualities in the candidate. Number one, genuinity. Number two, his trustworthiness. Number three, his dependability. When I am an interviewer, the most important thing I try to see is the trustworthiness of the candidate. I would rather hire a candidate with a little less skill set if I am able to trust him than someone who has all the skills but doesn't look trustworthy. Mistake number six, approaching as a job beggar. Going with the right mindset can phenomenally boost your chances of getting hired. You need to understand that if someone is spending time to conduct an interview, it means he genuinely has a problem to which he needs a solution. And his solution comes in the form of a skillful candidate. Approach him as a solution to his problem and you will see that your chances of getting hired increase highly. If you go with the mindset of a needy person, your performance will be bad. They are not in business to solve your problems. They want solution to their own problems. Approaching with a positive frame of mind is good. But be careful that you do not become arrogant or overconfident. And here comes the last deadly mistake. Mistake number 7. Asking about money. Now this is again a thing of basic etiquette that I am going to talk about. Some days back, we went to a recruitment drive to hire some candidates. Before we could begin the process, a candidate approached me to check out the salary we would offer for that position. Maybe the candidate was curious. But the point I am trying to arrive here is, do not talk about money at the wrong time. Rather, try not to be the first one to talk about money. I am not at all advising you to work for a remuneration that is too low. But don't sound money minded. It sends out wrong signals. And with this, we are ready to move on to our questions. Question number one. Tell me something about yourself. This is one question which you are going to face at almost every interview. It will hit you almost immediately after you have taken a seat. This question is a great opportunity for you to build a solid foundation and steer the interview in the direction you want. But if you go unprepared, one of the following two things would happen. Number one, either you would not have sufficient things to say after 20-30 seconds or you would land up reciting your life history. Both of these are a big, big waste of this precious opportunity. But before I teach you to draft a model answer, here are three important tips which you must remember. Number one, do not reiterate your resume. They have already seen it. The interviewer is not interested in your life history. An interviewer tries to see four or five important qualities in a candidate and especially the fresh graduates. And they are his ability to learn quickly, logic, proactiveness, seriousness and energy and enthusiasm. Make sure that not just this but all your answers reflect these. Okay, so now moving on to developing the model answer. Being a fresher, you would not have too much to talk in terms of your professional experience. But the interviewer is already aware of that. So to answer this question, you can talk about your skill set, projects, achievements and any other extra quality or skill that you possess which others do not. This extra quality could even be a hobby or a sport that you pursue. If I were to answer this question, I would say something like uh, I am Shipra Singh, pursuing my final year of computer engineering with this college. I like to learn new technologies. During my internship with XYZ, I got an opportunity to develop an e-learning app. It was the first time I was working on an application which would be used by the real users. So I was a bit excited and nervous both. But with the guidance of my technical manager, I was able to finish it very successfully. This project gave me a great insight into how the corporate world works 
the expectations they have from us as employees and how to conduct ourselves in the work atmosphere. Also, I love to play badminton and have even won the trophies in women's singles and doubles for my club. So you see how easily your love for badminton separates you from the remaining crowd. Okay, coming on to the next question. Why should we hire you? Guys, I must tell you, this question is like a goose which can lay golden eggs. So make sure that you have thought about it. You have prepared it well before you go to the interview. An employer will want to hire you only if you can add value to it. So focus your answer to this question on your skills and how they can be helpful to the employer. Tell them about your ability to grasp new things quickly. Adjust well into a new team and your flexible attitude. Remember, I told you in my video on HR interview mistakes. The right mindset can do wonders. Approach as a problem solver rather than being a job beggar. But ensure that in the process of doing this, do not become or sound arrogant at any point in time. A model answer to this question can be something like, I see that you are looking out for a sales executive to work with your channel partners in the interiors of this state. With an MBA degree and an ability to quickly understand the requirements of the customers, I think I will be a good fit for this position. I am very well versed with this area and my fluency with the local language would be a great advantage in dealing effectively with your customers who are mostly based in the rural area of the state. And here comes the next common question. Why do you want to work for us? This is quite a straight question. If it is a big company that you are being interviewed at, you can say something like, yours is a big company which leads the market in this domain. Every candidate has a dream to work for this company and having this opportunity, I would like to work for the best and become one of the best. If the company is not too big and you are considering it for the learning experience it offers, be honest and say something like, I have a degree in PR and communication and when I saw that yours is an established company servicing quite a few clients in this industry, I thought I should try to explore this opportunity more. Question number four, what are your strengths? This is again a very commonly asked question at any interview. The interview here is actually trying to find out what are your strengths relevant to this role. And your answer to this question demonstrates your preparation for the interview. Here you have to understand that you cannot keep offering the same set of strengths at every interview. It has to keep changing with the requirements of the role. It is a bit difficult to provide a model answer here. So I'm going to tell you a small exercise which will help you in finding the answer to this question. First of all, analyze the requirements of the role carefully. The job notification will specify certain things, but in addition to this, try to find out the unspecified requirements. Now, based on this analysis, make a list of the qualities required to perform that role. And on the other side, make a list of all the qualities you possess. Match the two lists. The things that match are your strengths for this role. When I am hiring the fresh graduates, in addition to their core skills, the most important qualities I seek are logic, learnability and dependability. Here I must tell you that it is extremely important that you do not just make claims. Ensure that you have at least two examples for each of these qualities. These examples can be from your personal or professional life. Question number five, what are your weaknesses? Now, this is one question that increases the heartbeat of every candidate. So listen to me very carefully. Here you need to understand that every human being has got weaknesses. And it is absolutely okay if you also have some weaknesses. The way I look at it, the interviewer is actually not even interested in your answers. Unless you talk about a weakness which will directly affect the work. He is more interested in finding out two things. Number one, the way you deal with this question. And number two, 
what do you do once you have recognized your weakness but don't take it lightly if you go unprepared you would land up saying something that you don't really mean as a fresher you won't possess any industry experience so no professional weaknesses most of your weaknesses would come from your personal and academic life so you can offer any weakness that will not directly affect your chances of being hired and then go on to tell the steps you are taking to improve upon them for example you can say something like i did not know how to work effectively on ms excel and powerpoint but i was always interested so recently i have started exploring both of them i am happy that i am able to deal with the linking of the excel sheets well my powerpoint slides are also coming out to be more interesting now so you see how easily you can tell the interviewer that yes i do have my weaknesses but i believe in taking actions to improve them question number 6 what is your greatest achievement with this question the interviewer is trying to understand what do you find valuable in yourself if you say something like i stood first in class 10th it means that you haven't achieved anything that big after that so try to find out an answer to this question from your near past if you are not able to find an answer to this question from your academic life it is absolutely fine to find an answer from your social life it is okay to say something like some days back i took an accident victim to the hospital on time and donated a bottle of blood for him which saved his life This example demonstrates that you are a responsible person. The next one. Where do you see yourself in 5 years from now? This question is usually asked to check the ambition and vision of the candidate. It is extremely difficult for a fresh graduate to foresee how his career would shape up in next 5 years. So all that you can expect to do is do your best in whatever you take up. you can answer this question by saying something like it is too early for me to foresee how the things would unravel in future i want to take up a position that would allow me to do my best and become the best question number 8 you do not have all the experience we seek for this position yes as a fresher you would not have all the required experience so let's go back to the exercise we did to find out the strengths make a list of all the skills and qualities required to perform the role make a list of skills and qualities you possess not tally the two and see where the difference is now you are ready to answer this question you can say something like yes i did think about this when i made a list of the skills and qualities required for this position and tallied with what i possess I saw that I possess the major 80% qualities but I do lack the remaining 20%. I am a quick learner and given an opportunity I can pick them up very fast. The interviewer also understands that it is difficult to find a 100% match to the requirements. Your answer will tell him that you are a serious candidate and you are aware of your shortcomings for this role. This coupled with your ability to learn quickly will definitely help you get through this question the next question what is your salary expectation now that you are a fresher you would be appearing for placements through your campus recruitment activity or maybe you will be applying directly the companies that you interview at would be at different levels the big companies would have a fixed salary for each level usually and rather than asking this question they would just make an offer if they like you a little smaller companies may have it either ways they may have a fixed salary for each level or they may have a range so rather than mentioning a figure yourself you can ask the interviewer about the package they offer to the fresh graduates and if it suits you you can say that you are happy to go ahead as per the company standards different people actually have a different opinion on this and i feel that if you are required to spell out a figure offer a range like mid 20s rather than an exact amount but to do this you need to research the market well in advance and know the range in which you fall just ensure that the range is not too broad 
and never be the first one to talk about the money matters the last question do you want to ask us anything given an opportunity you can definitely ask some interesting questions however there are certain things that i would like to alert you about number 1 don't ask obvious questions number 2 do not start interrogating the interviewer and number 3 you must know when to put the full stop so you can ask about the opportunities for you to grow in the company you can ask about when can i expect to hear back from you i also feel that this question is a great opportunity for you to find out about any reservations that the interviewer might have about your candidacy so yes if your interview has gone well take this question as an opportunity to deal with any concerns they may have about you you can ask them something like do you have any concerns about my candidacy this question will give you quite a good idea about what the interviewer is thinking about you with this we come to the end if you would like to read these and more such questions please visit careerright.com it has the largest collection of material for placements do like and share the video if you find it useful thank you and see you in the next video